This podcast is hosted by R Double P. If you are easily spooked, creeped, or offended, this might not be the podcast for you. Literally. <laughs> Sorry. Who are you? <laughs> yeah, as you can hear, I got no voice. So we were supposed to do two days of filming and recording last week. I couldn't do it because I could not talk. No talk. No speak. I'm, I'm sick. You're <laughs> <So> sick. <laughs> I, you can hear it in my voice. Like I'm just going to keep quoting that video <laughs> until we do yeah, it. Exactly. I'm sick. Exactly. You can hear it in my voice. I sneezed three times. <laughs> <laughs> Woke up. I sneezed. And um, we're here. We did it. Finally. Welcome to I Think My Fridge is Haunted. Woo-hoo! Season 7. Season 7. We're going to do like a 0.5 episode where we do a bit of catch up because a yeah. lot has happened already. We're back, but we're kind of half back. We're just a little, we're just popping in. Give us a couple hi. of weeks. Give us some weeks. Give it oh, some time. Because there is a lot that's been going on. So it was worth just like having an episode to be like, this year... Here is all the things. Yes. Because we'd take an hour and a half of an episode just to talk about and catch up. Yeah. We'd be talking and talking to it and we'd be like, we need to talk about a case, not oh, yeah. <laughs> just stuff, That's random it. stuff. But um, apart from being sick, how are you? I'm good. Uh, yeah, I'm good. I'm just busy. I just came back from Bali uh, a couple of weeks ago and I, I got sick in Bali. Well, I don't know. I might have got sick here, gone to Bali, come back. So I, don't, I don't know where I got sick. But you know what? I, it was interesting while I was on the flight. I was, um, I was thinking about this article that I had read recently. <laughs> <I'm> gonna, <laughs> okay. She's on holiday and Gemma's like, hmm, what if I worked more? So what about this? A flight from Amsterdam to Detroit was fo- forced to turn around after maggots fell from the overhead bin onto a passenger. So on this flight, I'm like, <laughs> in the flight, like with an umbrella, like, no, not me. It yeah, ain't me. It's not today. What? Passenger Philip Schott told Fox 2 that the woman sitting next to him on Delta flight, blah, 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 was freaking out when at least 12 live maggots <gasps> fell on her. She was just trying to kind of fight off these maggots, he said. <laughs> <laughs> like 12 maggots, like a handful. And she's like, ah. Well, it's it's weird. It is. Come it is on. super weird. It's freaking weird. <laughs> so um, he said, I don't really know what was going through my mind. I was trying to process it. <laughs> Disgust is one thing, of course. He said that the passengers had to wait for flight attendants to come who tracked the critters to a passenger's bag in the overhead compartments. Get this. They, they found that there was a rotten fish in there. What? <laughs> what? Why? Mr. Schott said, I did see everyone's reaction to the bag being opened, which was just an immediate pinching of the <laughs> nose. He said the fish, which was wrapped in newspaper, was taken to the back of the plane while the flight returned to Amsterdam Airport Schiphol. Okay. All right. What? Okay. One. Why? Two. Damn! You turn the whole flag around. That is such a pain in the ass. Because of a freaking fish in newspaper fish. and maggots. Uh, he said, "I'm surprised that both a rotten fish and live maggots were not picked up on by security." Yeah. <laughs> I'm asking the same question. How did they manage? To How? F- like the smell alone. Yes. How are we getting that past? Security. Have we just laxed in security over the years? Have we like relaxed a little bit? Is that why? But was the fish not secured in a backpack? Yeah, doesn't that go through x ray? Yeah, but even so, even if it got onto the plane, you've put it into the overhead compartment, the fish would be like in a backpack, like with a zip, yeah. right? Or at least some sort of some, some, Velcro like a, situation. Yeah. <laughs> how are the maggots getting out? Yeah. And I'm, how are they falling out of the compartment? Those things are pretty airtight. And yeah, and the bins as well. How are they managing to get out of the... How? <laughs> how? Just, yeah, that's cool. And I would be so pissed off. Because this is an overseas flight. They yeah. turned it around. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and 
maggots have fallen on your head. Like, that's the least, like, the, the last thing I'd expect. I technically, I suppose it's a biosecurity hazard. I mean, yeah, I suppose so. Because you're not so, going to take... Yeah. Where was they? Where were they flying to again? It was Freaking Detroit. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were going yeah. from Europe to America. It's a big flight. That's a huge flight. And yeah, by yeah, because you can't take fruit and you can't take animals and obviously like. It's Maybe safe. it's like a weekend at Bernie's situation. Maybe <laughs> the fish was like his really good friend, and he wanted to like to lay it, it to rest. Yeah. In Detroit. In Detroit. I. I Asperge, but also ew, <laughs> <laughs> gross, Yucca. So, so going on a flight now. So I went to Bali. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> naturally, naturally. Here Another important thing in the news: uh, Gypsy and Ryan broke up. Oh my god, the dick must not have been that good. The dick was <laughs> not that hot. It, this is the first thing I saw, and I was like. She's bragging about it. But I, I mean, guess. strong claims. I think maybe the fames just got to her and she's like, you know what? I it was a more. lot, though. It was a oh, lot yeah. all at once. All at once. But I have to wonder, like, is she being filmed this entire time? Like, is there a documentary being filmed? Like, her getting out of prison, her trying to get back on her feet, trying mm. to assimilate with society, trying to be a newlywed and living with his family, don't forget. They oh, don't true, live on their true. own. They live with his family. Or, or her – is it her dad they live with? I don't, I don't know who they live with. Someone's parents, yeah. And all of a sudden she's got 7 million people – on social media, watching everything she does. Yeah. Uh, so I just kind of have to wonder, is there a little bit of a keeping up with the Kardashians keeping motive oh. here? Yeah, look, I think she'd be silly not to. I, I feel like, like, you probably shouldn't. she should give herself a chance to, you know, re-enter society. But I think the way she came out swinging on Instagram. She really did. She, I, I did. I, I have... 100% agree that she's probably doing a keeping up with the Gypsy Rose situation. Yeah. And now it's all like the drama. The drama has to keep coming. Are we expecting your, them to reunite at some point? <sighs> Who knows? She'll be dating, what's what's the joke? She'll be dating Pete Davidson Pete very Davidson. soon. <laughs> very the, soon. They'll be shopping in New York in yeah. no time. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's just getting to her head. Maybe she's just like, you know what? I can do whatever. Isn't it strange that, like, we live in a time now that a uh, – would you call her a murderer? Yeah, I guess. Look, uh, she was. she's a convicted murderer. Yeah. Uh, it is, like, is famous again. Like, we're, we're still doing that. Like, we had, like, Ted Bundy and, and, and like, Charles Manson in, in prison getting married multiple times and things like that and having relationships. And now it's, like – you know, my, my TikTok and Instagram reels and, like, um, lives of her doing stuff. And it's like, what? we're still yeah. doing this. We still let people do mm, – I don't know. But I, she's like – I think she human, humans sentence. will never change. We will always be fascinated by criminals. Ent- entertainment. It's entertainment. They love it. Yeah. I love it. I get it. But also, it is like, when you stop and think about it, you go, it's kind of weird, hey? It's a little bit weird. It's <laughs> kind of like, look, and I, I'm going to have a – yeah, I said it moment. Let's do it. But, like, people are all like, she's a murderer, she killed her mom and all this kind of thing. Let's not forget mm. what, her, what her own family did with her ashes. Oh, wait, what was that? When they got Dee Dee Blanchard's ashes, uh-huh. they flushed them down the toilet. <laughs> I mean... No one liked her. That's fair. It's, I support women's rights and I support women's wrongs. <laughs> You know, like, <laughs> the, yeah, you have she, to think. <laughs> she, th- there's a reason why she went to that length. You know. <laughs> anyway, come um, for me in the comments. I'm excited to see <laughs> keeping up with the Gypsy Rose Blanche. <laughs> I'm really excited. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, it's either going to be a book or a TV show at some point. It's some. It's yeah. going to come out. All of this, everything that's happened this year, is going to come out. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, say, and it presume. just keeps coming out. I can't believe what has happened this year. Like, I've spent like so much of this year already being so mad, and I'm trying to let go of it. But just what are you sh- mad about? She just keeps coming. Okay, mm-hmm. if we want to like some, we're going to tell some stories from this year already, and I think people are going to be really familiar with a lot of them. 
Um, but mine are pretty much all violence against women. Mm. And I'm like, mm-hmm. it's a lot. It just keeps happening. Why, why yes. are we doing what's happening? I've like, got some things to say. Yeah, I've got some, I've got some opinions. Um, not even opinions, just like, <laughs> why? <laughs> what are we doing? Anyway. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, so I, I, I think I've been... I'm past angry at the moment and now like, okay, what do we do about this? And I feel mm. like what we are doing now is going to be helpful, in, you know, just to get information out there at least. So Yeah, yeah. The best thing that we can do is talk about it. Yeah. Because let's face it, the reason why we've got stories like Teacher's Pet, you know, Lynn Dawson and that kind of thing is because for some reason in the 70s and 80s, if someone's wife or mum went missing and someone said, oh, she just joined a cult or she, yeah. she went off with another man – People apparently just went, yeah, okay. Oh, all right. All right. That's cool. That's a choice you can make. Yeah. He said it happened. Yeah. So it, it happened. Yeah, no. People didn't talk about it. Yeah, exactly. People didn't question it. People didn't go, sorry, what? So what was that? What happened? Are you sure that's what happened? It doesn't sound like her. It, exactly right. So, yeah, the more it's spoken about, the, the more, you know, um, I don't know, awareness. I'll say awareness is out there. Yeah. Yeah. Awareness and also perpetrators are not just going to be, they're not just going to blow off into the wind and be swept under the carpet anymore because, Mm -hmm. look, let's face it, what's happening with Samantha Murphy? We're not putting this to rest. No, no, we're not done. Until we know the full story and until she is has a proper memorial and is laid to rest properly, we're not going to shut up. Yeah, exactly. Because we're sick of this. I think that was like kind of the the point I was getting to as I was talking to everyone and expressing like how upset I am and how angry it is and how I feel like even though I don't know her super directly, I feel like I shouldn't like the guilt and all that kind of stuff. And I started to go, oh, maybe I should – Maybe I should stop talking about it. Maybe I should stop. And I went, "Mm, no, actually. It's Mm. really fucked up. Yeah. Um. There is so much we don't know, and if we stop talking about it, she gets forgotten, like mm-hmm. so many other women. Until it happens to the next lady that's just jogging on a Sunday morning. Yeah, and we all, yeah, get, you know, the memorials going and everything like that again. There are so many candlelight vigils people can go to. It's not okay for this to happen. Yeah. Yeah, that's the, not, the, you know the what? line. Screw boys, we'll be, we'll be boys. No. No, stop. Enough. Enough. Stop it. I've had enough. Stop and killing people's moms yeah, and wives. for no fucking good reason. So well, why don't we start with, before we get too hidden, start with something um, great to celebrate is that our little uh, Fridgy community has now reached 820 followers on Instagram. Hurrah. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, it's it doesn't l- sound like many to you, but it's a lot to yeah, us. It is a lot to us. <laughs> and it's, um, it's cool. It's been like slowly creeping up. It's been a lot of me... Um, messaging people who follow and I go cool can you show your friends and family that would be amazing thank you and they do and it's wonderful so we're getting there and I'm feeling really good about it and I'm hoping that season seven is just like so thrilling that everyone just jumps on board because they should yeah 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 yeah. and we've been connecting a lot with our our sort of podcast peers as well other people that do similar stuff to us yeah um from um the guys at beyond the shadows yeah definitely to the girls at um Crime Caffeines and Canines, oh God, yes. uh, who are also Melbourne-based. Check them out. They're really, really good. Yeah, like podcasters from Australia but also across the world yeah. as well who are in the same boat as us, just wanting to get good information and talk about these things out there and get a little following and we're helping each other. It's really, really nice. Mm. So thank you, mm. everyone. Hey, creepy people. This is PNW Haunts and Homicides. I'm Caitlin. And I'm Cassie. Together, we explore stories of the paranormal and true crime throughout the Pacific Northwest. For each episode, we do a tarot reading to help us gain some insight on the topic as we share the facts of the case and our interpretations. You can find our episodes featuring true stories from infamous cases such as the misdeeds of Boeing, as well as lesser known true crime cases like the murders in Tunnel 13 as well as our spooky stories from Pike Place and Raven's Manor on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you'd like to listen. Have Have a a creepy-ass day. Also, our YouTube is now, like, fully stocked with Season 6. So we're officially on YouTube now, just just so you know. 
Um, if you don't have any of the um, streaming platforms, if you do not subscribe to the streaming overlords, mm. you can jump on YouTube and listen to our episodes and watch the live shows and including now video episodes, which we're going to try and make more common. So like, comment and subscribe. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> because we are talking about um, a lot of uh, domestic violence cases, I just wanted to do a, a quick another shout out for um, the National Sexual Assault Domestic Violence uh, Counseling Service or 1-800-RESPECT, which is 1-800-737-732. Uh, just in case any of this is quite triggering, it is a lot. I'm going to try not to yell try we are here by ourselves so maybe i could yell um but just a reminder that if you need help or you need support and you don't know who to go to 1-800 respect is there Hmm. um i don't know who wants to start i've got some pretty hectic stuff to start do you want to know what just go for it awesome just go for it um okay uh i think i'm gonna leave samantha maybe till last Hmm. um just because i don't know i get really emotional still the, um, like I say still as if it didn't happen a month or two ago. Mm. Um, but yeah, I wanted to talk about um, Shweta Matagani first, who was uh, the mother whose um, body was found at a wheatley bin. <laughs> and I've got an update. Uh, I, admittedly, I don't have the latest update, but I don't think there is any. Uh, this is rep- There's not been anything for a while. Yeah, this, this bastard needs to come home. Anyway. Mm. Um, oh my god, we're gonna be on YouTube. I can't swear. <laughs> you can swear on YouTube. I think it's after a minute. I think we can have like can we have a fun bleep sound. <laughs> yeah, I can put a meow over it. Oh, that'd be cute. Okay, <laughs> so reported by Nine News. Um, Shweta Madagani has been remembered as a lovely woman who, um, after her body was discovered in a wheelie bin on an isolated country road uh, in a paddock west of Geelong. Okay. Shweta owned a... So for our overseas people and yes. interstate people, uh, west of Geelong is it's pretty rural. Yeah, it's in between... It'd be in between, like, Ballarat and Geelong, and there is not a heap. I say that, and people are going to come for me, but there's not a heap in between. It is rural country. So uh, it's, like, Melbourne and then Geelong, actually, from this angle. There's Geelong... Sorry? Melbourne and then Geelong's down here and then further west. Yes. Um... In, just on a random country road, uh, in the report, they spoke to the man who owned it and he was like, I have never seen anything on this road. It is just a road to get in between, you know, places. There was mm-hmm. just a wheelie bin off to the side of the road. So, uh, Shweta owned a clothing store in India while her husband installed, installed solar panels. Uh, the mother was found in a paddock in, in Mount Pollock Road in Buckley, west of Geelong. Uh, it says yesterday it was reported March 10th and it has been linked to a second crime scene 86 kilometres uh, away in her home in Point Cook. So which is like towards the city. Yeah, towards. So it would probably almost be in the city. I actually don't know where Point Cook is. I should look that up. It's like near Sunshine. Oh, yeah, yeah, so like West Melbourne. kind of area. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's a decent hike. Yeah. Um, okay, so her husband, Ashtok uh, Varikupala, may have flown to India with their three-year-old son just days prior to the disturbing find. Uh, police combed through their home at Point Cook, uh, which remains a crime scene and seized their Mercedes. I don't know if it's a crime scene anymore. I'm sure that they've gone through everything they can by now. Um, this is actually, we are recording on um, April Fool's Day. We are. First of April. Yeah. Pranked. Yeah. <laughs> Pr- prank, I wish. Um, okay, so then reported on March 14th, Victoria Police say they believed the woman's husband, Ashtok, has fled overseas. So it all kind of got connected there. Mm. Uh Ashtok is believed to have arrived at their his in-laws' home, so Shweta's parents' home in southern India, where um, the couple's young son with the couple's young son on Saturday the 9th of March, the same day that Shweta's body was found. So he was already gone. He was out of here. I mean, and he pretty much just like handed the baby over. Yeah, just handed the kid over. Um, and apparent allegedly while with the in-laws, Ashtok reportedly uh, confessed to Shweta's parents that he had suffocated their daughter. Quote, uh, I am sorry for what I did. Shweta is no more. I killed her, he reportedly told them. 
like wow yeah just straight up (laughs) just straight up told them um he continues it happened unintentionally I didn't want to kill her we had an argument so I held my mouth uh, I held her over her mouth and nose by my hand and she suffocated to death you have to do that for a long time for someone to suffocate yeah (laughs) like reading that I was like um (laughs) not only do you have to do that till they pass out but then afterwards like you're not doing that and just being like oh shit she's dead like that's not an accident it's not an accident that's it's time, purpose. there's time to think you can't say unintentionally suffocated my wife <laughs> like yeah yeah that's not a thing okay he then reportedly handed over their uh, their son and left uh, it's understood that Shweta's sister alerted the Australian police from India, leading them to discover Shweta's body on the side of the road. Um, detectives believe Ashok is still in India, but no formal uh, extra extradition extra extradition. Thank you. A request has been submitted, which I think it has been now. Really? Uh, yeah. Because remember that night I got really mad because I was like, have you seen this article? Because the Indian police are saying, we've been following this case, but no one's called us. Yeah. yeah. No one's actually called us to say, hey, we're looking for this guy. He's fled to India. He's from Melbourne. He's killed his wife. Can yeah. you... Can you get him, please? You know, can, can you locate him or attempt to locate him? Yeah. So what's up with that? And that was a good week after. Yeah, exactly. Extorted? No. Uh, I will have to look that up. I'm sh- I, like, I think maybe like um, wishful thinking. I hope that they've been able to put in an order to do that. Um, I need to have a quick look and see whether it's actually happened. But he uh, also reportedly, Ashok said that he wanted to come back and handed himself in, but it hasn't happened yet. And mm. it's been, you know, half a month, a couple of weeks at least. There's only so many times you can blame Qantas. Yeah. <laughs> the delays. <laughs> I just can't get over. So it's a, a grim start. It's a grim start. And this happened, I believe, while, um, yeah, well, March. It was happening while all the Samantha Murphy stuff was happening. Um, and I just feel like a lot happened since, like, Samantha Murphy went missing and then all this shit just came out. Mm -hmm. Like, this happened. Um, Another woman was found dead. Like, it just – they started to rack up and I'm – yeah. It is is difficult being a woman in Australia and going, like, what? I'm not safe going for a walk? Are you kidding me? Well, it mm. reminds me of another woman that was murdered and um, named Toy Accordingly and she was up in Cairns and she was walking her dog um, on the beach – uh, in 2018, in November, uh, sorry, October, mm. and she was killed on the beach. And the man that killed her also fled to India. Uh, and it took a while to get him back. Um, it says four years later, in November 2022, the Queensland Police Service and the Australian High Commissioner to India announced a $1 million reward for information leading to the location and arrest of Rajwinda Singh, 39 years of age. Did he come back? Did they get him? Uh, yes, Good. they got him. Uh, he, he was believed to be living in India in the intervening years, but his exact whereabouts were unknown to authorities. Several weeks after the reward was offered in 2022, Cairns detectives travelled to India for discussions with authorities there. And by November 26, Mr Singh had been arrested and the extradition process began. The trial is pending. It, it will be this yeah. winter. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, 2018. And then the but what it says to me is you can kill a person in Australia, go to India, and no one will really follow you. Yeah, unless someone, you know, tips them off and goes, oh, I've seen that person. But yeah. even then, yeah. It seems to be a bit of a common disappearing act yeah. that people can do. I wonder if um, her parents can can be – if anyone's interviewed them – yeah. To, to get an idea of where he might have gone. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. I, again, couldn't see anything, but they. it seems like they let the police know pretty dang quickly and just went, uh, <laughs> he's here at the moment, but now he's gone. So um, mm. I don't know. And I hope they get him because uh, it's just like really a bin. 
like yeah. a wheelie bin. Yeah. I think I didn't mention as well when they were sweeping the house that there was um, the bin was missing and a high pressure cleaner was nearby. So, so he actually took his own bin. Yeah, their their green waste bin was missing, and that's what she was found in. How do you get a bin 80, 86 kilometers uh, in a Mercedes? Oh, like how you? How is that happening? Put the seats down. Oh, I suppose. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, apparently he's managed it somehow. Yeah, it's so gross. Um, yeah, gross. Yeah, super gross. So that happened. That's the thing that happened. Mm. Um, yeah. What have you got? What have you got for me? Shall we go back and forth? Okay, so um, I actually, speaking of wheelie bins, I actually learned about this <laughs> other case. This is in South Australia. The former lover of a missing man whose torso was found in a wheelie bin has been charged with his murder. SA Police last week announced they had arrested two people and charged them with the murder of Jeffrey McLean, who was reported missing back in August 2022. On Monday, uh, so this is actually about two weeks ago, 49-year-old Cherie Glastonbury faced the Adelaide Magistrates Court charged with Mr McLean's death. She was reportedly Mr McLean's long-term lover, according to sources close to the family. The court heard Miss Glastonbury would not be applying for bail and was instead adjourned for change charge determination in June. So we don't know exactly what's going on at the moment. Uh, so... Uh, w- <laughs> a torso. Uh, anyway, Shocking. it says court document, documents have re- received... So there's this other guy, Mr Murphy. Um, he's 51 years old. He's allegedly... <laughs> Seriously? Freaking this <laughs> out. My God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I think there should just be like a, a hard cut of us turning around. <laughs> that was so scary. Um, okay. So this guy, Mr. Murphy, who's also uh, involved, involved in this torso in the wheelie bin situation. Yeah. Um, he, okay, in April 2022, Mr. Murphy alleged allegedly assaulted Mr. McLean with a log splitter. What is a log splitter? Whoa. Is that like an axe? I think they're like the automatic axes. Jesus Christ. Yeah, log splitters. Um, surely. Yeah, like so it, it, where it, they go, come around. This guy, Mr. McLean, ended up in hospital. Like, that's bad. I'm surprised he didn't lose all his limbs then. And also, how are you doing that? Are you setting... Did he like take the axe off? Did he pick yeah. it up? Yeah. Did, so did he? Did he? Did uh, he tie this guy down onto like a workbench? Yeah. Well, in any case, Miss Murphy was charged with attempted murder over the incident. But just four months after the brutal attack, police believed he helped murder Mr. McLean. So it looks like is it say. is it like you know two people trying to take out is a like triangle situation yes. or something like yes. that uh anyway so they they uh, i don't know where the rest of his like his body is so they say the dismembered torso of the missing south australian man was found in a bin in a salisbury south vacant block then the police re- uh, released cctv footage of two people acting suspiciously near the lot where mr mclean's torso was dumped and police later confirmed the wheelie bin used to discard some of mr mclean's body parts had been stolen from an address about a col- kilometer from the scene uh so what happened to the rest of it says it's alleged the wheelie bin was stolen sometime after his murder. So it looks like they killed him. Yeah, maybe freaked out a bit. What do we do now? Yeah. Dismembered him. Dismembered, yeah. I thought. I know. If we put it in someone else's bin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They'll never know. It's not our rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> you put something in a neighbor's bin, you're like, it's fine. Wow. It's fine. Just pop a torso in there. That's too much. Um... I, I want to know where the rest of him is. and I, I've actually got on my list like to do a whole episode on wheelie bin. Honestly, murders. at this point. It, it's a whole thing. Like, it's a whole thing. Like, literally, it's, let's just put the body out. Yeah, let's pop it in. No so, one looks in bins, so I'll just pop it in. Like It's a whole thing. I just... it It's awfully suspicious if a wheelie bin is somewhere it's not meant to be, you know? Like... <laughs> 
what okay. <laughs> I'm just I'm just so shocked that there's often wheelie bin stories. You're right, we should do a whole a whole episode. It's all thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm. So, um, can we talk, talk about uh, just just really, really briefly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, our main obsession, Epat, Erin oh, uh, yes. Patterson, Bring the Mushroom E-Pat. Murder. I actually Who? saw. Sorry. Yeah. Has a whole podcast now. Did you say that's that? That's literally what I was just about to okay, say. Okay. Sorry. 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 Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah <laughs> what the yeah, fuck? Yeah. Yes. Yes, yeah. so some other podcasters that are apparently better at it than us have been given funding to cover this uh, yep. <laughs> case That's worth, like, properly. And probably given, <laughs> like, more sources. To, to maybe, maybe they have. And better headphones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> better lighting, those bastards. <laughs> so what was – I mean, we talked briefly uh, after we did two episodes on, on the case. Yes. We talked briefly at our live show back in December about how she had been – Arrested and charged, mm-hmm. uh, which was so exciting. It was thrilling <laughs> as uh, soon as it came out. <laughs> so we've got the uh, three murder charges, mm-hmm. and then we've got five yes. attempted murder charges. This was th- which was thrilling wild. to come out. Yeah, five attempted. Yes. So um, we've got uh, she, she attempted to murder. Um, Oh, my Lord. Her husband? No, no, no. No, no, no. Uh, Ian. Ian. Yes, Ian. Ian. Uh, Pastor Ian. So he survived yes. and I would presume was able to give evidence that I led to these so. charges being laid. I'm glad that it's like if he has, it's been kept very quiet and he can just peacefully recover mm. by himself because I haven't seen anything, but I assume that he's been able to give it's a full times. report. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes. Sometimes in small towns like that, they really protect people as well. Mm-hmm. They're like, you know, we don't want press here. Yes. Um, you know, we, if he's giving a church service... Just let, just let him, him yeah, do it. leave him be. But um, exactly. yeah, I hope he was able to give like a full report mm. of what happened during the, the the lunch. Yes. Yeah. So that was one attempted murder charge. Yes. Leaving us four more, which yes. all fall on Simon. Yep. The ex husband. She tried to kill him four times. <laughs> four times. Four times. What does that tell you? Um, that she's bad at murder. Does it? It either tells War. you this is a smart lady. Yeah, yeah. Okay. She's a former air traffic controller. Yeah, true. She comes from a smart family, very, very highly educated people. Mm-hmm. Am I going to get in trouble if I give my theories? I mean, we can always cut it out. <laughs> Look, it's a theory. It's a theory. It's just a theory. I think. It was a case of Munchausen's by proxy. I think she wanted to make the family ill. I think she wanted to nurse them back to health. Yeah. That's always been my theory. I don't think that you can attempt to kill someone four times and not succeed. not succeed. Yeah, no, okay, yeah, all right. We all know that she wanted to allegedly fix the marriage. She wanted Mm. to get back together with Simon. She wanted to bring the family back together. That's why she had the lunch. She wanted to prove to the extended family that she was worthy of being part of this family. They all ended up getting extremely ill. Yep. Three of them passed away. One survived. One, thank God, didn't turn up. Yeah. (laughs) Didn't take the invitation. Exactly. Mm. And... He probably thought, well, she wouldn't dare do something like that to my parents. Well, she did. She certainly did. I think that she wanted to be almost like their angel. She wanted to make them sick and then she wanted to bring them back to health. She wanted to be the person that was their personal nurse. Yeah, it wasn't working with Simon, obviously. The attempts didn't work out for her. So she was like, you know what, let's take it. To the next best thing, if you will, and yeah. yeah, try to do that for his parents. Now, I'm just wondering if, uh, you know, the, the, the so called dosage that she used, perhaps on a guy like Simon, we know he's a basketball coach, so yeah. maybe he's a, you know, he's a healthy guy, he's a lot younger. younger yeah, yeah. He's what, probably f- late 40s? 40s? Yeah, I'd say, because she was in her late 40s. I think 40s. she's 48. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. so I would say he'd probably be late 40s, so he's a. You know, he's, he's a fit guy. Um, if you're giving something to poison a, a guy of that age and of that mm-hmm. level of health, uh, a, a certain 
poison. Yeah, yeah. If you're going to give someone in their 80s the same thing. Same amount, yeah. Please. You know, they may have a lot of underlying other issues, other health issues. Maybe they've got a weak heart. Maybe they've got a bad liver. Maybe they've got bad kidneys. Who knows? Mm-hmm. And he's – and she's – Accidentally, yeah, she messed up. You know, taking it too far. Yeah, yeah. Uh, That's yeah. my theory. I don't know. It sounds pretty plausible to me. It's obviously premeditated. All this stuff about her getting the mushrooms from an Asian grocer is a pile of shit. Yeah. It never happened like that. She collected the mushrooms during mushroom season. Mm-hmm. She dehydrated them. She kept them in the cupboard. Yep. And then she got rid of the dehydrator. Yeah. Yeah, it's... And how about this? She got rid of the dehydrator after the lunch, right? Yeah, that's wild. Why didn't she get rid of the dehydrator months before? Yeah. I don't know. It's because she panicked. She said, Uh, they weren't supposed to get this sick. They weren't supposed to die. I've got to get rid of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to get rid of everything. Yeah, again, it's plausible to me. There's a lot of things you'll do in panic, including just tossing everything out. And maybe if she hadn't, oh no, it would have been discovered anyway. But like, I don't know. I think I think you're pretty spot on. I think that that theory isn't far fetched at all. Hmm. And I can't wait to find out more from the other podcast. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna have to listen to this funded podcast oh. and get all the real tea. <laughs> but let's just go through all the things that were found in her house yes. by. Those adorable electronics dogs. Yeah, oh, they are very they're cute. They're sniffer dogs uh, from uh, Victoria Police that are they're specialising in finding electronic devices. Which is wild. That's adorable. I love it. Uh, so I've, iPad kids, but dogs. <laughs> <laughs> they okay. found five iPads. Fuck, speaking of. Now, we don't know if these were concealed. Like, you know, under oh, mattresses, hidden. up in... You know, on a top shelf, like covered with some books, or yeah. maybe they were in like the manhole going into the, the attic. We don't know. We don't know. In my mind, they were concealed, hidden everywhere. Hidden, you know. I mean, do real estates need five iPads? Maybe, maybe they do. Oh, like they've got kids, and then keep <laughs> going through everything. I don't know. I don't know. So five iPads, a mobile phone, a USB, and a smartwatch were among items. Among items. Found by sniffer dogs at the home of the Victorian woman at the centre of an alleged mushroom poisoning plot. Now, the six-hour raid, uh, this, uh, I I think, took took place in November. Okay, yes. Yes. Six-hour raid. That place got tossed. They also found a SIM card and a micro-secure digital card. Mm. Oh, and a trail camera. Mm. Is she putting any of this yeah, into an electronic footprint? Well, yeah, that's the question, isn't it? Did she figure it out? Like, because didn't she like um, do a mus- mushroom foraging thing the year prior or something like that? Like, she held a class or she went to a class or something like. I believe, Wasn't that a thing? I believe she was a known forager forager of mushrooms, and that she had books on the subject, and that she was interested mm. in the subject. I don't know about any active classes that she ran or took part in. Maybe it's just something that I read, but um, maybe she didn't have to put it on electronics. Maybe they're looking for, like, her panic afterwards, whether she's texted people or something like that. Or if, yeah, she has written something down, like, dosages for like or maybe she had one ipad where she could you know do um how much of a certain poison would one have to ingest uh, yeah the, the google to searches be Ill, the, the, google, the google searches yeah. and um you know th- that we often find yeah. at crime <laughs> scenes um perhaps she you know d- <laughs> Didn't want to just do it on her iPhone yeah. because that's the first place that the police People are going to look. look. So maybe she did just get like kind of like a bit of a burner I- iPad, yeah, and, and, a burner and iPad, a burner <laughs> iPad, and did her and did her shady dealings on there. And then maybe her iPhone was just kind of Disney and yeah, yeah. Maybe they're looking for Starbucks um, cups. Yeah. 
<laughs> Stop <what's good. laughs> um, maybe they're looking for previous conversations with her and Simon of like yes. proof that there is no way they were getting back together, even though Simon already said that after the fact. Um, you know, anything. I suppose anything at this point could be considered evidence. Um, yeah, that, hmm. that's a lot of technology, though. I don't know. Maybe I'm just like in my 20s and just don't own a lot of things but that's a lot of <laughs> that's a lot of things um so yeah i hope they've found something mm. something helpful i think a lot of it will come out during the case yeah i think her her uh, you know they're preparing the case as we speak i think a lot is going to come out during the case yeah it's going to be explosive these these police officers and detectives are, are run off their feet lately <laughs> Do you think that the case with Erin Patterson uh, in any way affected the way that the investigation was run for Samantha Murphy? In that, when EPAT happened and the notorious interview by the car, Uh, it was a free-for-all. Yeah, it was. People lost their minds. Yeah. With theories and, you know, everyone was going to Lee and Gather and trying to, you know, take photos of her house and she couldn't feed her sheep and yeah. blah, 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 blah. I think with the Samantha Murphy, we were only given little pieces of information at a time. Yeah, definitely. I think they were definitely trying to keep it way more locked down than what yeah. happened. We don't want another Aaron Patterson. No, because, like, that, that interview, quite infamous, there was just press in her in her private property like i don't know what the deal was there but they were literally how can that be legal I, that's what i'm thinking and i, I feel in her like, driveway yeah right at her doorstep literally chasing her until she's in her home mm. doesn't seem legal at all but i think you're right looking at what the smith murphy case and i watched um some of the live streams from the police uh announcing information and so many questions i just didn't answer or couldn't answer but also chose not to answer because they were like, we just don't want what's happened with um, with the mushroom murders where everyone is now a detective, including us. Um, but everyone has an opinion. The rumours, like, it, it, I, I think absolutely. Mm. I, absolutely it has um, affected what is happening now because, yeah, it's just the more opinions being thrown around, the less truth is out there at the end of the day it's always going to affect uh the 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 jury that you choose exactly as well because how do you find a completely unbiased unbiased jury when um, the court of public opinion has already taken place. Mm-hmm. I think I, I spoke about it uh, at some point last season. I can't remember which episode it was, but I spoke about a Tasmanian woman who was um, – and, and she does have a title, I apologise – but she was working on a way to make people – juries less biased mm. and, like, having a lesson, like a, a, a class before – being a juror so that you can be unbiased, mm. which I think... Even is, if you've listened to the podcast, even if you've read yeah. the, the article, Because you can't not. Even if you watch Sky News. Yeah. God forbid. <laughs> um, <laughs> exactly. They, like, they're, you have to come in there and go, I can't um, have previous bias and previous opinions coming into this. I need to be, like everyone else in that courtroom, only hearing what I'm hearing. Hmm. Of what they are telling me because let's face it how many people do you know that have no access to technology whatsoever we have got a constant stream of information coming at us mm. from all all directions all directions all the time yeah you open facebook you open instagram you open the news app you watch the tv you put the radio on there's yep. information coming all the time yeah exactly so it would be hard to find someone that uh you know maybe doesn't really have access to a lot of technology it's it doesn't yeah. really exist and then how um helpful is that person going to be if they don't have access to those things and they're talking exactly. about this person has five ipads all these things all that that person's going to go well why does that matter hmm. it does matter um so there is yeah there because you don't want people in the, in, the, in the jury that are disconnected from reality and 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 modern times exactly right that's the same thing so yeah i think there is going to be have to be a a new way of the way that courtrooms work Mm. which is insane since a lot of the work being done is still stuck in like the 80s 
you know, like it's a lot of paperwork still and programs needing to be updated and things like that. Like it is, um, it is very interesting to see what's going to happen and mm. how it's going to be uh, still be able to bring justice to cases like this. So, mm, yeah. I don't know. How, how long ago was this report? Like, well, the technology said last year probably. We haven't really heard much uh, since. The search warrant was executed last November. Yeah, and it's only sort of now that we're finding out what they found. Actually, what they found, yeah. Mm. I mean, look at that delay, like, at, at the start of... They're not giving us information until they are sure. Yeah, yeah, which I, I, I appreciate, mm. you know. I want the truth. I, I love a gossip as much as the next, mm. but I want to make sure that, you know, we do have the right information. Um, so it isn't a witch hunt because it's just... There is so much happening that I, I think you are so spot on that what has happened over here with the mushroom murders and now going into something like Samantha Murphy, mm. people have their opinions and they're not afraid to say it, mm. no matter how extreme they are. Whether it's true or not is yet to be seen, but... Uh, I, okay, so do we want to get into Do Samantha? you want to talk about Samantha? I think maybe it's, it's up to time. You because, you know, she is a family acquaintance of yours. Well, the, yeah, yeah. So this thing, I'm from Ballarat. Um, I, not originally, but for most of my life I've been in Ballarat. Um, I was an acquaintance of Samantha a um, oh, oh, long time ago. Samantha was in the um, the amateur theatre scene in Ballarat, which mm. is quite t- tight-knit, I'll say. There's two major companies that do big um, productions, and Samantha was uh, like a volunteer, a part of, I believe it was Lyric Theatre. Mm. Um, so I would, I have met her. Um, I remember her. I don't know her very well, and especially not in the last probably, you know, five to ten years but I have met her and the thing with amateur theatre again it is quite tight-knit and um whether you like to gossip or not or like whether you love it or hate it when you've been a part of theatre it's just kind of a part of you especially local theatre so um I don't know I took this one pretty hard um even if I didn't know her just having something like this happen in your hometown, I will say. I think Melbourne's a little bit different because it is a bit bigger, it's a little bit more separated. But mm. Ballarat, especially if you'd lived there in the last 20 years, it was quite small. It was a small town. It is now quite big. I think it's second to Melbourne or Bendigo or something like that, which is insane. Mm. Uh, anyway. Would you describe it as a safe town? Like, for all intents and purposes, yes. There is, like any town, rat bags and things like that, but it it was never, like, I, I, I never got affected by it, if you will. Things would happen, um, people are horrible, things like that, but it was never anything like this. Um, Samantha Murphy, if you, ha- like we were saying before, haven't heard, uh, was a mother a 51 year old mother in Ballarat who um went for a run and never came home Mm. um right so Sunday February 4th Samantha Murphy leaves her Eureka Street home in Ballarat East about 7 a.m to go for a run in the Canadian State Forest so Ballarat East is kind of like um it's close to the city but it's a little bit on the outskirts it's kind of closer to the highway to go to Melbourne basically okay really nice part of town and just remembering back to that day, it was it was a hot, hot day. Yeah. It was that, like 37 degrees or something. So I'm going to guess that a lot of people wanted to get their exercise, you know, get the dog walked early. early. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So fifty one, uh, the 51-year-old is captured on CCTV wearing black leggings and a maroon brown coloured singlet. Uh, she also has a phone and smartwatch with her. Um I read somewhere that that actually wasn't her or something or like... So there was two images. There yes. There was the one of her bringing in the dog poo in the bag. That was her, That's for from, sure. I think that was taken by the neighbour's camera. Yeah. And then there was the one of her running by the gate and then someone yeah. came and said, no, that was me running yes. by the gate. That wasn't her. Yeah, that's the one I'm thinking of. Mm. Um, so Samantha fails to return home and when, when she's expected to attend a brunch. Emergency services and community volunteers begin a search nearby in the Wuwu Kang... Kar, uh, Woo Woo Karanga Regional Park or the Canadian Forest. 
Apologies for the butchering. And she could jog a long way. Yeah, she Let's, was like, she was doing was she was, 20K yeah, runs like, regularly. Like, like half marathon length runs on the regular. Yeah, this is a, so this is a, fit, she did a fit lady. Yeah, and I think um, the, the volunteers came in a little bit later because we all assumed that it is hot, she has passed out somewhere. Mm. We should go have a look. And people jumped on board really quickly, I will say. I think this may be like a day or so later people started to volunteer because it was kind of like we'll just wait and see whether she just turns up because of the heat or something like that. Anyway, mm. Mm. I will give it to the Ballarat community. They really jumped on board. so um, They really have. Yeah. So Monday then, Feb 5th, uh, police launch an investigation. Detectives tell the media they don't suspect anything suspicious at this point. They do reveal her phone last pinged near the Bunny on Golf Club um, about 11 kilometres south of her home. Okay. Um, and from my understanding, phones can ping up to like 20 kilometres away from towers. So don't know how helpful this was going to be at this point. But, but um, there were no pings after that? No, no the, it was done. Yeah, there was, it was almost like her phone SIM card had been taken out and destroyed. Yeah. Now, I will say um, we will get to the, the reasoning behind this, but Bunyong is on the way to Scottsburn. Mm-hmm. which will make sense in a second if you don't uh, understand. Um, you have to – there's um, Ballarat East, it goes into Bunny Young, and then it goes out towards Geelong where uh, Scottsburn is. Um, okay, so Thursday, Feb 8th, family members make an emotional plea to the public to help find their mother. So there's three kids. Uh, I think it was the oldest daughter that spoke. Mm. Um, being an eldest daughter, I think that also kind of got me. <laughs> In the heartstrings, it was. Um, if anyone's seen it, uh, a lot it's, of people have. It is it's hard to watch. It is really, really mm. hard to watch. Um, quote: uh, I, I didn't get her name unfortunately, but the the eldest daughter quote: People just uh, people don't uh, people just don't vanish into thin air. Someone's got to know something. No, beg your pardon. That is her husband saying that, uh, Michael Murphy. Whether it's um, whether any little thing uh, that you might think is relevant, just call the police. It'll give us peace of mind if uh, we can get some hope. Um, so yeah, that that plea was pretty hard to watch. Mm. Um, I think as the days went on, not necessarily the hopelessness, but it was just getting stranger and stranger and stranger that they swept the whole forest um, because of the Ping and Bunyong. There's a heap of mine shafts over mm-hmm. this side of town as well. So people, you know, searched the mine shafts where they could and, like, with hundreds of people searching, it was just like she has just been vanished mm-hmm. into thin air. Yeah. Uh, February uh, 9th, on the Friday, missing persons detective take over the investigation as additional resources are deployed in the region. Um, I think there was, like, special forces were coming out and SAS and things like that. Mm. Detectives begin speaking with the telecommunications technicians but do not give any more information. Um, And just a day later, on the Saturday the 10th, the search is scaled back. Uh, Wednesday the 14th of Feb, Victoria Police Chief Commissioner Shane Patton declares the disappearance is being treated as suspicious but says there's no evidence of foul play uh, has emerged. Mm. Uh, Police follow up hundreds of pieces of information and conduct a targeted search in the area. Um, I think we were briefly in the Facebook group Yes, the infamous Facebook group. Uh, which got pretty nasty pretty quick. It was, yeah. And so there was a lady that was a friend of Samantha's, I believe, that started yep. a Facebook group, said uh, it was called something like Find Samantha. Yeah. Or Find Samantha Murphy. Find Samantha Murphy. Yeah. And uh, it quickly grew to something like 20,000 people in the group. And not yep. everybody in the group was helpful. No. And people were bickering. And it was, oh, it was, man. yeah, it, it was not really helping. It started out as a, right, I'm going to look in this direction. I'm just laughing because I remember there was this one lady that said, how about, she goes, how about when we search an area, we put some toilet paper around a tree? <laughs> yep. I Which, remember this. As soon as. You say, like, there's so many issues with that. Like, So you want to um, mark the crime scene. So you want to put something in the crime scene now yeah. that someone else is going to find and go, I found something. <laughs> well, not only that, but like toilet paper d- 
deteriorates if it rains well, or, yeah. if it, or if it's windy. Yep. But also what you're saying is this area has been searched. It's now free for other people to dump their bodies here because <laughs> we're not going to come back here because there's toilet paper. That is a very good point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's just, so there was a lot of unhelpfulness. Yeah. Um, and there was people like I remember seeing – I'm coming from Melbourne today to come search. Yes. Where do I start? Like it was, it was, it very quickly became too many cooks. A lot too of cooks. Too many cooks, cooks. And too many opinions hmm. jumping in. Um, some very helpful ideas, some not so helpful. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> like all good Facebook groups, <laughs> it's yeah. good intentions, bad, bad outcome, unfortunately. Um, but that, that. So that, it was, um, it was shut down. After it, yeah. not very long, it was like 10 days or something. Yeah. Was, um, so the, the lady that was moderating it was... Was like, okay, yeah, this enough. is not what I intended. Yeah, um, we're shutting this down. Yeah, good. I think we jumped out. Maybe we jumped ship a little bit earlier because it was just a constant bombardment of people's opinions about it. And it's like, well, no, we just need some evidence or some facts. Like, yeah, anyway. Yeah. Um, it was a time there were some comments. Um, anyway, uh, Friday, Feb 23rd, police reveal more that one person might be involved in the disappearance. Detective Acting Superintendent Mark Hatt tells media the possibility Murphy was still alive was slim. Uh, quote, unfortunately, given the time and the facts, we've, we've found no trace of her. We have severe concerns and we are very doubtful she is still alive, he said. Investigators review up to 12,000 hours of CCT footage and follow up more than 500 separate pieces of information. They worked their asses off on this one. Yes, they really did, and I think they still are. Um, But at the same time, you know, they're giving it such a little bit of information. Like, we think that several people might be involved. How? How do you know that? Yeah, yeah. What What makes you think that? (laughs) Yeah, what what have you seen? What do you know that we don't know? Which, Um, of course, at that time, people were like, well, is it Underworld? If you're saying that there is several people or more than one there's multiple people that are involved in this case is it underworld related and like that guy that was taking the questions at the press conference the Mm. the head of police who Mm -hmm. did really really well yes he did you know and that one lady she said is there a motorcycle involved yeah and i think it was a very loaded question Mm. well at the same time i think again a week or so into this happening uh, another woman was killed by, by a bikey in her front yard. That's right. So, yes. um, As a, uh, it was Rebecca, a, it was a, her name was Rebecca. It was a um, case of domestic violence, wasn't it? It was. A uh, bikey turned up. Um, <sighs> the reports say that they knew each other or former lovers or lovers at the time. I don't know. I don't know if I believe that. Um, but he turned up. Uh, killed her and then killed himself in the front yard. So I think people at the time were definitely speculating whether it was either linked or if there was something happening with a bikey gang or X, Y, Z. Like To many people, yeah. all, all they needed was bikies operate in this area. Yeah, absolutely. And they, they do in Ballarat, but... Um, yeah, yeah, very loaded questions. And this is when the rumours start flying around. This is when the photos of that um, Samantha's husband are on the front of the paper where he is smiling. I think they just caught him at the wrong time. Like, they just kept just... using that photo, didn't they? And it was mostly the Herald Sun mm-hmm, that was mm-hmm. like, you know, he, where he was having a little chuckle with a police officer. Yeah. And they just used this photo over and over again. And they're like, oh, you know who did it? This guy. Yeah. And that's when the rumours started flying. And like, look, with what we do, yeah, we're, the husband usually does it. Like, we, that is something that we have said and sometimes believe, but like, it's, it was just not the time, mm. you know. Like I, I, again, I think because I am connected to the Ballarat community, I was taking it a little bit more personally. So things like that, I was like, no, like just let them do their job for goodness' sake. Mm. Um, so that might just been a personal thing, anyway. Um, okay, so on Wednesday, March sixth, a twenty-two-year-old man is arrested at his home in Scottsburn around six a.m., which blew everyone away. Blue People were like, everyone. what do you mean, 22-year-old, what, huh, huh? who, How? who is this person? Um, so, not to, again, make this about me, but I actually went to Scottsburn Primary School, 
So hearing that it was a, a young man from Scotsburn made me uh, like shiver in my boots. I was like, nope, nope, that is way too close to home. And you told me Scotsburn Primary School was very small. Yeah, when I went to Scotsburn Primary School, it was like 17 kids. Um, granted, because he is 22, um, he would have been like maybe born <laughs> when I was at this school. Yeah. Um, but it's just one of those things where it's like, you know, when you're like a degree of separation from someone yeah. that you, you just go, Ooh, uh, like, I, don't, I just don't believe that that's something that is possible. But unfortunately, it, it, it seems to be possible. It also tells me in small town, someone knows something. Exactly. Secrets like this do not stay hidden in small Tiny, tiny towns like that. Yeah, I, I just, I would, I would love to see the connection of how they got to him. I want to, I want to see the timeline. I want to see it. We'll a, see it at some point. Yeah, at some point. Yeah, that's it. So they arrested this young man with one count of murder and from the courts. However, his identity was suppressed, which was but was it? You <laughs> was it though? But in, they put out like the everything about him for about six hours. Yep. You took all the screenshots. Got everything. <laughs> and sent them to me and Chris. Yeah. So we knew guy. exactly who he was. <clears throat> and then they put a court order to suppress, suppress his them. name. It was too late. Everyone it's already knew it. The following morning, it was all back. Yeah. They'd, they'd cancelled the order because it, what's the point? Yeah. Everyone and knows. What, 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 what was the reason? And he's 22. What was the reason? He's 22 and son of a former AFL player. God forbid. <sighs> God forbid. We ups, upset the the rainforest of football. Yeah, that is it. That is it. What? AFL's not violent. Um. <laughs> no one's ever committed a crime who's been associated with AFL. No, no, never. No, never. <coughs> so when I start, like, doing this, when I've started, like, crunching the table when this all kind of came out. Yeah. Um, it's, like, it's, it's my thing with teacher's pet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. He didn't do anything wrong. He plays rugby. Yeah. Oh, God forbid. This is the thing as well. As soon as that suppression order, order was up, photos of him in um, football outfits, his dad in the football, I'm saying outfits, like in his uniform, in his costumes, costumes <laughs> um, football, 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 AFL, AFL, AFL. And it's like, who gives a fuck? They're, it's one of two things. They're either, they're either trying to say Aussie pride. Yeah. Football player. He could never. He could never. No, not him. Or they're saying football players are always in trouble. I mean, I mean. Let's call it spade a spade. Honestly. And, like, also thinking about Scotsburn, like, it was a small town then and it still is. Like, there's really nothing there except for farmland and a school um, and, like, a corner shop, if, if it's still even there. Mm. Um, it just, to me, I just went, oh, yeah, country boys. Checks out. Doing whatever they want to do. There's nothing else to do. Like Speaking of doing whatever they want to do, did you see the videos of him? Oh, yes, I did. Okay, so the suppression order is not in order anymore. His name is Patrick Oren Stephenson. He's 22. Um, his dad played 15 games of AFL. Just 15. He did lots of VFL. I'll give him that credit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he played a total of 15 games. Um, so who gives a fuck? Uh, the police are yet to recover Murphy's body and the investigation remains ongoing, which is still happening. And um, it's alleged that he's, quote, not cooperating with police. Yes. Yeah, so when um, the suppression order lifted, um, we got his name, address, date of birth, all of that was filed away. But also a video surfaced mm-hmm. of Patrick allegedly, uh, not allegedly, there it was, was a video. Right well, unless it's a really good deep fake. <laughs> really good deep fake. Ballarat's not that smart. Uh, <laughs> Bless you, Ballarat. Uh, of Patrick snorting a white substance off a phone in Ballarat nightclubs. Uh, which, having lived there and been to Ballarat nightclubs, this is what happens. There is nothing else to do. This is uh, quite often. But it was so bold that it was, it was just so at a table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, I, was, it was in the middle of everywhere. It, it was, he didn't care that anyone was filming. His mates didn't care. Like, didn't care. Nothing. And I'm pretty sure it was at JD Sports Bar that was mentioned. And oh, that it sounds like classy. So classy. Will you take me there? Up the no. <laughs> <laughs> Up the no. But it is on the main street. It's on Lydiard Street in Ballarat, which is in the right smack bang middle of town. Like, 
No fucks given whatsoever. I'm pretty sure that's the straight one when we were doing the ghost tour. That guy went, ooh, Ballarat. <laughs> and just totally <laughs> broke broke the spell of the tour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just, there is like, I think every country town Hannah has that like, you can be like, oh, Ballarat. And everyone goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, it is a bit like that. And it's like, well, I'm from Ballarat, so I can joke about it. <laughs> it's just we make fun of our town. Which is just kind of what you do when you're from a smaller town, but um, embarrassing that you were at JD's. <laughs> right. Super embarrassing. Do you feel like it just kind of like tells you everything you need to know about this person? A little bit. Yeah. And, and like I think um, Volta got mentioned, which bless Volta, I really like Volta, but um, it was like the only kind of alternative club setting that we had. Um, he doesn't look like an alternative kind of guy. He looks no. very... But, but saying that as well, there's... Bitches only... and beer, shall yeah. I say. <laughs> He looked like a child because he is a child. Um, but, like, there's three clubs in Ballarat. There's no, like, three. Um, uh, you know, there's not much to do. And if you are going out clubbing in Ballarat, it does tell me everything I need to right. know about you. It's yeah. kind of like, okay, all right, cool. Yeah. And snorting off your little phone. Yeah, all right. Um, anyway, so after uh, this has all come out um, – I believe he's been arrested and uh, faced the court and now we're going to have to wait, as per usual. But um, he is not giving up the location, which I don't want to get into the rumours we were talking about before because Mm. that does not help. But um, it does sound like he's not cooperating or he doesn't know. Either he doesn't know because there is a third party that's involved. Mm. Um, I'm not committing murder when I was 22. I'm dumb. Mm. I'm scared of life. And yeah. In 2024, it's hard to commit murder and get away with it. Absolutely. I'm Absolutely. wondering if he's just his legal t- team has just said, shut your mouth. I, I reckon I would too. Just yeah. keep your mouth shut. Yeah. Because Don't say anything. We, maybe the police, we, we know that they've got evidence on him because they've charged him with murder. We yes. don't know what that evidence is. We know that they've taken his car into custody. Mm-hmm. We don't know why and we don't know what's in the car. So maybe they're just still calling the police's bluff. They're just saying, we we don't know exactly what you've got on us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so until the time comes when you give us 100% concrete evidence like DNA evidence, yeah. film evidence, whatever, we're not going to give up. Because the minute that we give up where we know where she is is the minute that we're pleading guilty. Yeah, exactly. And lawyers ain't doing that. No. Or well, defence lawyers aren't doing that anyway. Like, yeah, it is a bit of a touchy situation. Um, yeah, I would be curious to see what they've got because I, I believe as well that – the, the Canadian State Forest has, like, four-wheel drive tracks through it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so if they've picked up his car, it, uh, originally I thought, oh, maybe this is an accident. Maybe he's mm-hmm. hit her and taken her and panicked and buried her somewhere, something like that. But, but what 22-year-old that hangs out at JD's and does – home videos of himself doing cocaine yeah. is out at 7 a.m on a sunday the next day mind you allegedly that video of him snorting was the day before samantha went missing yeah so he's, he's not out at, he's not jogging he's not he's not going for a drive they're not like going four-wheel driving the next day like he's and, sleeping in the bin yeah <laughs> No wheelie bin. Yeah. Put him in. Um, exactly. Sleeping in the gutter at the front of Bluestone. Like, it's right. just what happens. <laughs> um, yeah, and the fact that he's been charged with murder, I'm like, oh, so not an accident. Okay, never mind. We'll check that out. Yeah. Um, if, if he had accidentally run her over and if it was a hit and run, he would have been charged with manslaughter, yeah. attempted murder, second degree murder, he would not have been charged with murder. Yeah, and I think at that um that the the police officer who gave uh the live stream announcement about um the arrest also ruled out hit and run cuz someone asked. I'm pretty yes. sure a reporter yeah, asked they did. is it hit they and did. run and he went no. So it was just like, all right, good. It's great. wild that we still don't have a cause of death. Yeah. Uh, it's wild that we still haven't got her. To to put it in like a simple way, it's insulting. Like mm. 
it's so insulting yeah. to her, the to level her of family. Um, whether there is other things involved or not, it seems like Samantha wasn't involved. It was just she's just a mom. Like yeah. she's what a bystander of whatever situations happened behind the scenes. She's a bystander. Yeah, exactly right. Um so after this, the city of Ballarat had a range of tributes for Samantha during and after the investigation of forms of visual. They held um a mass visual at the Eureka uh, park, I believe, mm. where uh, the mayor spoke and from reports it was not probably the tribute that we wanted, I think, because... In it what is, way? Well, I, again, this is allegedly, I wasn't there, um, but apparently uh, Des Hudson, which I will call you out because I've met you, Des, and you were quite nice, um, but was trying to be like, I'm not trying to make this political when this is a political thing. <laughs> Like, this is a woman being murdered in your own town. Um, apparently, again. Again. And apparently he spoke for, like, half an hour just talking and talking and talking at these people who were, one, trying to um, hold space to grieve Samantha, um, but also trying not to make it – it's not a political thing because the vigil was also held, I'm pretty sure, on International Women's Day or the day before. Right. And then, uh, yeah, because Stephen got a- arrested the day before – International Women's Day on March the 8th, which I think, again, made it even harder, not only for people from Ballarat, but for all women Mm. and people involved um, just witnessing this case. It was kind of like, cool, so for International Women's Day, I get to grieve another woman's death. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Um, So anyway, I don't want to talk shit about uh, something I wasn't there for, but apparently the vigil was... um, not exactly what Ballarat needed at the time. Right. We didn't need a reminder of um, making it about, you know, Women's Day and things like that. It was just a visual to grieve this woman. Yeah, yeah. Which they didn't in lots of ways. They also held mass at the Bunyong Church, I think, weekly um, or, or nightly. You could go and light candles and things like that for her, mm. which is good. Um, I also put up a photo uh, a few weeks back. The local production by Lyric Theatre of Annie mm-hmm. had a um, – I'm getting, like, emotional <laughs> thinking about it. Mm. They had a, um, a projection on the curtains before and, like, interval and after saying that this production was dedicated to Samantha Murphy, which is, like, just lovely. Yeah. Um, that was kind of, like – the things we needed that's what i was gonna say yeah. that's how it's done exactly right yeah. um and also i saw it was very very nice um almost 100 victorian joggers did a walk slash run i of, saw that that was cool yeah the last seven kilometers um that samantha murphy didn't finish so wow yeah it was like it's just that's what you need that's what you want to do to come together as a community when something like this happens and i think for ballarat we hear a lot of things happen, but this was just another level, totally mm. another level. Mm. Um, it is interesting all uh, that this was coming about at the same time as uh, a parallel case was happening in Sydney. Yes. So we had two cases where we had a suspect that had been charged, and we but we did not have bodies. Mm-hmm. And one over in Sydney ended up leading the police to the remains right. of the two guys that he killed. Oh, oh, yes, yes, of course. Sorry, yes. The police, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Um, and at the same time, we're sort of expecting what's happening in Ballarat to happen the same. Yeah. Well, you know, when are we going to find Samantha? Yeah, yeah. And it didn't happen. Yeah, it, yeah. And that, yeah, I, I'm just thinking about that, the case in Sydney. It's like it, it, both charge quite with a lot of anger from mm. the communities yeah. involved. Um, yeah, you're right, though. At the same time, it was totally parallel. Mm. And, but unfortunately... It was like tennis. We're going... We're looking from Ballarat, yeah. Sydney. Ballarat, Sydney. Yeah. And it's like... And Goulburn as well. It's not that far from us. All this stuff is, is not that far from us. Goulburn, no. just for international listeners, um, has a, a big sheep. <laughs> yes. When you get to Goulburn, big Goulburn sheep. has basically nothing. It's got a prison... Oh, yes. And it's yes. got a big ram. It's what's called the big ram. And it's this gigantic 
sculpture that you can you can climb up to the top and and it's Speechy. like you can look at its eye or something. I don't know. Australia is weird. Loves a big anything. A big anything. A big banana. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a big anything. Yeah. But um, the, yeah, they are all quite close and I don't know, like extreme. Like all all crime is extreme, but this is just wild like this is so insane that this mm. is happening and then oh 22 year old it's like wait what huh yeah what do you fucking mean um yeah so um i don't know i i think as someone from ballarat i feel a, a small amount of responsibility especially as a podcaster because um podcasters definitely got dragged through the mud a little bit because people were yes. talking about samantha and trying to make sure that it is um still spoken about and doesn't get forgotten and mm. they got raked through the coals because it was seen as entertainment that samantha's miss um you know murder that now is disrespectful it's disrespectful and it's it's not it's about isn't it more disrespectful it. to not talk about it i think to so. sweep it under the rug yeah like lynette dawson was mm-hmm. like you know 35 years later someone from the australians like hang on a minute yeah this thing happened we and should not, talk about it. Yeah, exactly right. And now, guys, in jail. Yeah, see, like, it, it, I'm not saying that, like, well, it was super important, but it kind of is. Like, this is the way that people learn about things now. This is how we, um, with, with just endless amounts of information, mm. there are people who are trying to make sense of it or trying to make it in a streamlined way, like... We do hours and hours and hours of research so, so that we know we're putting forward the right information. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, like, we're trying to do our best here. Um, and true crime's not going anywhere. No. People love People it. have been obsessed with death and violence for thousands of years. Yeah. Since the gladiators it, were fighting exactly. each other in, you know, the Colosseum. People have enjoyed watching... You know, heads rolling at the guillotine yeah. for you know many many years, and they will for years, and they and will years for to years to come. Um, but I will say, I hope going forward, because unfortunately things like this will continue. Talking about um, what we're talking about today, I hope that especially the Ballarat community is as outraged and angry about every single person that goes missing or gets uh, gets murdered or something like this. There is something to say about a, a nice white m- middle-aged woman going missing. It is it has become huge, and mm. I hope that any person that mm-hmm. this happens to gets as much uh, screen time yes. and spoken about as Samantha. Yeah, and the uproar should be equal for all women that are attacked. Yeah, and it is happening a lot, and yeah. it, it needs to be spoken about. So. Whether you don't like podcasts or you see that we're just trying to make entertainment, it's not the case. We just want everyone. Or that voice we're to be heard. roaring feminists, yeah. we're man haters. Yeah, all that shit. Like it's it's not. It's, it's just not. observing what's happening around yeah. you. Um, we're just saying enough is enough. Exactly. Exactly right. So uh, yes, that is Samantha. I think I spoke a, a lot, um, but I have um, been stomping around my house, being so angry about this for yeah. months now. And it does need an outlet. And it's part of the reason why we're so happy that we've got 800 followers on Instagram <laughs> yeah. as well. Because, like, remember we were saying, we were saying to Angel, the photographer who, who, who does our photos, we were saying, um, you know, it's a, it's a lot easier, because we were both burlesque dancers, it's a lot easier to get followers when you're putting your boobs out. Well, you know. <laughs> but when you're a woman with an opinion and a microphone, it's mm-hmm. harder to get followers. It's Because people sure are is. like... Why? Why would I want to follow why, that? Why is the tassels talking? Yeah. Why are they talking Get now? Back in the kitchen. Yeah. Having been both burlesque performers, <laughs> I can tell you, my my follow account was a lot bigger when yeah. it was. It's a lot. It's a. It's a lot easier to get followers when you're. Uh, yeah. All, all legs. Yeah. <laughs> um, which is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it is amazing, but um, yeah, we we we're not going to stop, and I don't think we should stop. Um. Mm. I hope that we get uh, some justice for Samantha very soon and, yeah, find out more what's happened. Um, and it goes without saying, if we ever go missing, you oh. know, I want more than just a little bit of, of the newspaper ex stripper murdered, found yeah. in bin. Yeah, yeah, oh, found in bin. It's just another news I article. Want, 
influential podcaster. Yes. Spoke to brutally attacked. Sp- her, did her words <laughs> like? Yeah. I want. I want allegations. I want I a want conspiracy. Ev- yeah, I want it. And like, <laughs> <laughs> we're like, no, it's we got to be respectful. We want the facts, but also if we go missing, yeah, it's, you know, because we're doing the right thing. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully, yeah. it's it's one of those things where it's like it's not about me, but I feel so connected to what's going on that I am now. I feel like I am part of it. Yeah. And I think that's what a lot of Ballarat is feeling at the moment. Yeah. And probably in Sydney and wherever, like, anything is happening, it's it's very surreal when something happens so close to you. Mm. Um, so, yes, uh, we will continue to, much like Mushroom Murders, we will keep up with it and hopefully more comes out soon. Do you have anything else? Um, I kind of tried to want to end on a high note. Mm. Um, one is um, if you're on TikTok, you may have seen there has been uh, random attacks happening in New York where uh, oh, women... Oh, this is so weird. Yeah, women in particular are just getting punched in the face um, for being there on their phones, they're walking, whatever, just out of nowhere there has been a male attacker and I'm... I'm reading that there is multiple uh, and just punching them in the face and then leaving. Uh, so a lot of women are going to TikTok and recording themselves being like, this just happened. There was one TikToker in particular. I, I, think I, re- I saw one of the TikToks and she was kind of like laughing, but she was kind of like, I can't believe this has happened, but it's kind of like, I can only laugh. I think it was one of those time things like it just, it, it, it was just, so just happened. Yeah, it was, it was like, so what weird. the f- what do you mean that just happened to me? Um, uh, Haley Kate uh, McGookin, she uh, put up a video and she was like, she had been sucker punched, like it wow. was straight into the face. And at first I was kind of like, um, why are you putting this on TikTok? And then I went, no, this needs to be seen straight away. And for her to go, look what has just happened. I am the evidence that this has happened um and then heaps of other women came forward on the same days like it was one or two um days in particular that like 10 to 20 women came forward and was like i was just walking in new york on my phone and then all of a sudden someone punched me and because of that you know i don't know you get keeling over for a second and then he was gone Hmm. one of them has been arrested thank god what there's more than one um Allegedly, there is more than one. Is it the incels? I think it's the incels. <sighs> and the incels are coming out. So this guy is king of the incels. Yeah. Seriously, we don't hate men. We don't. But <laughs> but just, I don't know, be a decent human. Incels are it, on another level. It, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, putting anything in extremism, it is another level. Anyway, his name is Ski... A skiboki Stora. He was 40. Um, he was uh, charged with assault uh, Wednesday, which I will find the date for it, uh, in connection with the random attack on the Monday mm. of Haley Kate. Um, so this is the description of Stora, an aspiring rapper who unsuccessfully ran for mayor, governor and city council over the past three years, appears to maintain 10 different TikTok accounts, which were viewed by the post and, uh, document his aggression with strangers in New York City, most of them women. So this guy has a TikTok, 10 different TikTok accounts, where he literally films himself stalking women and harassing them and just um, just for being women. Vote one. Or for t- <laughs> yeah, and just like they're just minding their own business. And if someone talks to me on the street and starts stalking me or something, I'm not talking to them back. I'm not giving them an inch, and he was just using that as fuel. Um, I had a look at some of the videos, and they're just fucking sad. They're just distressing. How um, random. And, yeah, well, and I guess he thought that wasn't enough, so he started punching people. So that's cool. Um, I saw a really good video about um, the language, again, we're using is, like, women aren't getting punched. They're not getting assaulted. People are assaulting particularly women in New York. Like, women are not making this happen. Mm. There is someone, in particular, we know, a man, a 40-year-old man Mm. who is going around and punching people. Yeah. Super fucked up. Like, what? in what world is, like, someone goes, yeah, that's okay, I can do that. I can get away with that. Yeah. Like, 
Um, so that is in a way good news um, that we got one of them. Um, and also just to end on a light note, uh, incredible uh, archaeological, archeologi- ar- I can't say words, um, uh, archaeological, ah, uh, key, key, or, or, law, law, g, g, cal, cal, archaeological. Um, is getting closer and closer to finding um, Cleopatra's tomb. What? Yeah. Stop. Dr. Uh, Kathleen Martinez, she's been looking for Cleopatra's tomb for 20 years. Yeah. And she, I think I saw a documentary about her yeah, a while ago. She, she did this live stream where uh, in Feb, I believe, which she thinks she might have uh, narrowed it down. Um, into, was it discovering a tunnel in the Mediterranean Sea which may potentially lead to uh, the tomb of Cleopatra? Wouldn't that be amazing? Wouldn't that be incredible? And most famously, Cleopatra was known for saying um, before she died that no man will ever find my tomb. Oh, she said, really? She said that. And now Dr. Kathleen Martinez is like, yeah, bet. All right. (laughs) Why did she not want anyone to find her tomb? Because you would have thought that she would have been like... Everyone should visit my tomb. Visit. I think it was just the fact Bring that she's offerings. like, no man's going to find it. So no. This chick will. So I think Dr. Martinez might find it, which is very, very exciting. So amazing. Um, yeah. The, the, I won't get into it too much, but like the tunnel she found is so insane. And the, um, the, the structure itself is, I think it was like Greek style tunneling and which would make sense. Which would make sense, Mark Antony and all that kind of thing. Um, but the the condition it is is in is just stunning and incredible. Uh, for like also makes sense. Yeah, yeah. For for Miss Cleo, like it's gonna be nice. Um, but I thought that was really cool, and I really hope we find out more about that. And um, it'd be super cool if she found it. Super cool. So cool. And we don't let the English eat her. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, no, no unwrapping parties. Oh, man, I've been, like, researching this season. I read more about the English eating mummies, and it, they just ate them. Why? Yeah, it's, it's, been popping up, it's been popping up a lot in my algorithm as well. Yeah. It's, we've got a very similar algorithm. <laughs> um, anyway, okay, I've been talking a lot. Um, yes. What's coming up this season? Oh, my gosh, so many exciting things. I am really excited. What for... have you got in store for us? Um, well, no surprises. I've got a history-based one to get us started, and I think something a bit fun. I wanted something fun to start the season. Um... I've got nothing fun. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing. No, I think maybe we start the season fun, and then we just... We just get into it, you know. Yeah. I've done, um, like, I've started some other ones, but completed two full stories, and they're very, very different, which is really um, cool. Yeah. Um, I don't know. How much do I give away? One of them is related to um, Stranger Things. Oh. <laughs> I will say that. <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> which is very exciting. Um, something I've been interested in a long, for a long time um, and took a lot of work. History is just so convoluted. Mm. It's insane. But um, I'm really excited to make fun of some old dudes. Great. We don't hate men. Yeah, cool. <laughs> what, have what have you got? What have you um, got? Okay, so, yeah, I've got a lot of history actually happening this, this season. Yes. But uh, uh, I've also got a few cases of true crime as well. Great. Um, yeah, I've got three crime cases one of which is well a couple of which are really really famous cool. and one of which is like no one knows about it like yeah. no one is talking about this case yeah i've got a true crime one as well that i was surprised i hadn't heard about mm. it was quite a big deal but um yeah i'd never heard of it and when i started reading about it i was like i think more people need to know about yeah. this yeah um so yeah oh, i'm so excited uh to learn more. yeah yeah we are we're diving back into plague Yes, I've been back in plague, it. plague, um, plague land, and you caught it, and I caught it, <laughs> I caught it. Actually, Gemma went so into research that she was like, "I'm going to get plague." Uh, actually, so came, I understand. It came out of the books. <laughs> <laughs> Don't joke about that. <laughs> um, yes, more video. Hopefully, more um, being able to watch us talk. And yeah, emote. if I can work this out, and, and if I can get this edited, and it it, it 
doesn't drive me crazy because I'm not a super, super, super technical person, but I can manage a YouTube video. Yeah. It won't be, like, amazing. <laughs> like, you know, like, Nikki from... Oh, I mean... Macabre London, like yeah. she knows, she knows how to do like cool, like zoom up Trans- and stuff like that. Transition, trans, yeah, all that kind of stuff. And she's good at that. Stuff. Well, maybe not, we'll I'm learn together. Maybe we'll get more, but we'll, more better at it. Cool. Also good at talking. Yeah, good English. <laughs> um, but yes, and there's also more opportunities maybe for some community engagement, which will be awesome. I'm trying to work out a little bit of that at the moment. I know we've been talking about Patreon for a while now. Yeah, forever. Forever. We keep being like, yeah, yeah, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Patreon. And maybe even more opportunities to see us in person. We'll, uh, oh, yeah. We will find out. Yes, yes. yes. Maybe um, we'll have another live show. Maybe we will, <laughs> um, which will be awesome. So, yes, please keep telling your friends and family. We love doing this. Um, uh, obviously, like getting back in the studio today was kind of like a bit of, like – getting back into the flow of things get back into the rhythm don't we get back into the rhythm which is awesome but it is so much fun and i love doing this with you and i'm so excited that we're doing another season it's so exciting yes until next time everybody until next time everybody um be creepy but don't be a creep (gasps) bye I do. Am I wearing one? Just because we're in this angle, I'm just like, I can (laughs) see your teeth. (laughs) Oh, it's because I had Invisalign. I've got the... (laughs) We're discovering (laughs) things about each other. (laughs) So intimate across the table. (laughs) Your teeth look great. Actually, can Invisalign sponsor us? That'd be great. Yes. Look how good. (laughs) (laughs) I'm built in metal now. Um... (laughs) Why take a fish? <laughs> yeah, what's with why? why you the can fish? get fish in America, and it's rotten anyway. Like it takes a while for a fish to rot. Like, is it? Did it rot during the flood? No, because there's maggots already in it. Like, what?